Hey folks, welcome to Bike Chat. This is Gene, and I've got my buddy Brian here. Uh, we're gonna, we've got a pretty cool topic tonight. Do we still need bike shops? Let's chat about that. All right, Brian, so yeah, kind of a, you know, I don't think it's a topic that people haven't talked about before. Um, do we still need bike shops? It's a, it's, it's kind of a, it's a touchy one, right? Especially if you own a bike shop. <laughs> It's you know? re really touchy. I'm actually cu curious about what you think about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts first because I've got a couple crazy ideas. And yeah. but I, I know that you're a, a bike shop guy. I'm sure right. you're probably more in the sentimental camp. And that, yeah. So I, I want to hear tough. what you have to say. As much as I'm online nerdy guy, because I am. Um, like, and you mentioned this before. I didn't own a bike shop per se, as much as a rental shop at the downhill resort. At, it used to be called uh, Diablo. Uh, now it's Mountain Creek, but regardless, yes, I was there in person. I have friends that own bike shops, so it's it's hard. But I am an online guy. I don't get to get out of my house that often, so it's very hard because I want to promote the local shop. Um, but the thing that's happening now is that online stores are getting so much better, like Worldwide Cyclery. I mean, those guys you hooked me up with are, are awesome. They're literally on the other side of the country from where I live. And I feel like they're right here helping me. So I don't, I don't really know. And I hate to abuse a bike shop. I, don't, I hate going into a bike shop, putting on a helmet. Okay, I need a medium. Put it back yes. and order it. So that, you know, I, I'm going to say, all right, that's a scumbag thing to do. Because these poor guys are trying to keep a living going. So I, I am totally mixed on this one. Yeah. It's uh, it is, it's very divisive. Like I've somehow in my comments, I've only gotten a couple, like, cause my new bike day video, I was, I was talking, Hey, I, I bought from competitive yeah. I love them. I returned a bike. They'll let you return a bike right. and send it and change sizes. Like right. I promoted that. I only got maybe one or two, like, Hey, why didn't you buy it from a local bike shop? And not right. mad comments or anything, right. but, but why didn't you? I mean, right. that's great. And that video has a lot of views and yeah. that sentiment is, you know, dying and dying. And yeah. So here's my pitch. Here's my crazy idea. Okay. So I don't think we need local bike shops, okay. but we still need a gathering place. We need a hub. We need yes. a community center. I agree. I agree. These friggin' golf guys, they have their club. They have their golf club, right? They have the country club. Mm -hmm. Why can't mountain bikers have our version of the country club where – we all pay a membership fee and we have a physical space where we can actually go and hang out and chat right. and have a mechanic right. on the payroll. Like these golf guys have it all figured out right. and that is, it is an affluent sport. It, it's, it's, that's the way it is. It's, you know, we spend money on this, but oh, I just, that idea of, you know, well, 60 bucks a month, is, is that what would the, you know, the membership fee be to, to get us all in one place to hang out, and maybe it would be even a better community hub than a bike shop ever was. Well, one of the things, too, that I think has to change is the evolution of what a bike shop is. And here's what I mean by that. Exactly. Okay, so why do you go to a bike shop? You go to a bike shop, one, because you're screwed and you're in a jam, and you can't get it online, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. You know? Oh, crap. I was looking for knee I hate to interrupt you, but I was looking for knee pads <laughs> last week before going to Moab. Go to the local shop here that's down the street. Right. Nope. Go to the next one. Nope. Right. Go to the third one. Nope. I right. am shit out of luck about trying to get knee pads before. There's like 20 bike shops in yeah. my area within 30 minutes, yeah. and I hate them all. Well, but the problem is this. <laughs> the problem on? is this. There are a thousand different knee pads or, that you could buy. So what are the odds of the bike shop having the right one? Because here's the thing. You went in there because you were screwed and desperate and needed knee pads. Most people aren't. So they're going in because they're looking for the 661 blah, or they're looking for the race face, or this, you know, so, or the fox, blah, blah. Oh, you don't carry that? I'm going to go order it from Amazon. So exactly. they want the thing. A bike shop can't hold a thousand things. They can't. But, but here's the other point that I think needs to be thought about. You're not going to get rid of the online stuff. So no. the other reason why you go to a bike shop is for the tangible, well, I want to touch the bike. I want to feel it. Well, one of the things that we don't have once you go online, you can't touch the bike, you can't size the bike, and you have no support for the bike. So exactly. one of the things I think that a bike shop has to evolve into is a partnership with online stores where they have all their bikes lined up. 
You can't buy the bike at the bike shop. You cannot buy the bike from the bike shop. You can try it, you can rent it, you can test it. And guess what happens? When the bike is sold from the bike shop, you still have to go online to buy it. The bike shop gets a commission and you go back to the bike shop for the repairs and the service. And the bike shop has the right to have all the parts there to support the bikes. This way they can hold, I mean, there's a ton of awesome online bikes. I mean, a, 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 like a shitload of them now. Yeah, yeah. And one of the reasons why I don't buy them is personally, I'm a little half and half about dropping three or four Gs on something online and Side I size unseen. it wrong. Yeah, like you said yeah. the one will we'll send it back, which is awesome, but even yeah. that's a bitch. It is. It's it's crazy. It's like okay, let me drag this back to the UPS store. They they take right. it, and I didn't have to pay to send it back. But it's still like, oh man, yeah. this it's 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 quite a mess. And but yeah, I love that idea of like the bike companies having that fleet, that right. rental fleet available at the country club. You could go take it out for a ride. Right. Ah, it's oh, what a I, thing. I've got a bike helmet video. I got to put up. I actually did it for for um, for Brian Vaughn, and. I'm not going to say too much about it because I have it all in the video. Yeah. But they actually made me pay for a restocking fee. Who the hell charges for a restock? <laughs> I mean, in this day and age, you know. Exactly. Anyway, it's all in the video. I, actually, yeah. I, I only brought it up because I thought I posted it already. I just realized I didn't. But the yeah. fact is, yeah. it, it, when I think of a bike shop now, I think of it has to be something different. It, and, and, it has and to. You have to evolve to. with it. Yes, exactly. And. And we'll start seeing them die if they don't evolve. And yeah. I just read this uh, book, Shoe Dog, by Phil Knight about Nike, and it is an awesome book. Okay. But uh, there's a quote in the book that he kind of repeats over and over about the Oregon Trail or coming to America is that, like, that we're, we're all these immigrants, and you know, the, the scared never started and the weak died along the way. And that's, that's America, man. Yeah. We got to evolve or die. And, and, I mean, when I have to buy something, it's generally either Amazon, I do spend more time with Worldwide Cyclery, um, or, or a lot of people love their performance, or Nash Bar, or those different companies, yeah. um, but it, it is online, and, and, and here's another big reason. I can't get out like I used to, okay? Dad, two kids, family, I work from home, so I can't even go to the bike shop on the way home from work. Yeah. So for me to even go to the bike shop, it's like 20 minutes to get there. 20. I don't even have that time to yes. even do it. And, and Amazon Prime, holy Christ. I mean, yeah. literally, you can get it in a day or two days. It's like, why? why? Yes. And I can get anything I want. Any freaking thing I want. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing. It's like uh, these bike shops have like nine to five hours. So even if you did have an office job yeah. and you were trying to get there, it's like, oh, we're close. It's like, what? And they're right. still writing receipts out by hand, and I mean, yeah. it's uh, I I I don't want to go. I can I know, talk I know. about how much. And it's just, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Right. There should be one good bike shop where I've had one good experience, and where I would be like, "Man, this is great!" My yeah. local shop. I've seen them all. I've been to them all. I the lists of. Uh, it's don't hard. Get me started. And the other thing too is the the one that I go to, the local one. Um, Sussex, Sussex County Bike Shop, Sussex Bike Shop, um, great place. I like the owner, Jason's awesome, uh, but Trek kind of won the war. So the thing is, Joey, Joey Trek, Joey, yeah, yeah, dude, that voiceover was, I couldn't believe how good you did that. I had to watch it two or three times. Like, I'm like, holy shit, he did that so well. So, you know, what if uh, Trek called me today and said, oh, hey, hey, Brian, it's, it's Joey Trek, Trek Bicycles. Oh, man, we love what you're doing out there. We love you zipping through the trees and all that bullshit. <laughs> uh, well, Joey Trek, you got to uh, – I'll post a link to the video about Joey Trek, and you, you've probably already seen it, but anyway. Yeah. Um, the deal is this. He only carries Trek. Yep. And, and Trek's good. I love my Remedy but I only really bought the remedy because of the Trek credit card. Yeah. All right. And yeah. because that's what he carries. And, but now he does support the bike, which is nice, yeah. but I have to tell you, and, and I'll be curious to ask some other folks with the evolution of YouTube, how much more do you bring your, but like if I drop literally three to four grand on a bike, obviously I'm into it. Okay. I'm not a noob. 
all right? I know how to work on these things because you don't drop four grand on something you have no idea how to use. Yeah, yeah. So do you use YouTube now to fix your bikes on your own? Because the tools aren't that expensive either. Yeah, um, and, and I, yeah. I, I mean, this is another one of my local bike shop, you know, horror right. stories where I fumble around in the garage and I'm like, okay, I can't get it. I'm going to take it to the shop. Right. Hey, they can't get it either. They don't know what the hell they're doing either. Right. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. Well, luckily, luckily, Jason is is good. I took my downhill bike to another shop at one point. It's it's debatable whether they scratched my stanchion or not. I don't really know. I hadn't used a bike in a long time, so I don't. That's yeah. why I'm not even saying any names because I personally, yeah. it could have very easily been my fault. I hadn't used a bike in so long. But the fact is that I even have this doubt that yes. it's you know what I'm saying. Um, but mm -hmm. when it comes to suspension. I'm gonna still need help. But then I have this uneasy feeling of bringing this bike to a bike shop and say, can you fix this? And, yeah. he, and he, then looking at it, they're going, I know that son of a bitch bought that online. You know? <laughs> but, yep. but what am I gonna do, dude? I mean, like, like, okay. So when I did run that rental shop, I can tell you right now, folks, that the markup is generally 50% on a bike. I'm telling you right now, the markup's 50% on a bike. Anything less, and it's not worth the real estate to keep the bike in stock in a bike shop. So it's 50%. So if you're looking at a four grand bike, you know that bike is two grand. That's a lot of money now. It's not even like the part's $25 and you're paying $50. Okay, it sucks, but it's not going to kill you. But when you're talking yeah. to G's here now, multiple thousands of dollars, you know? Airborne, yeah. they make some decent bikes. Okay, um... Da Vinci, holy, those bikes are beautiful. Um, even the Diamondback one, Seth loves his Diamondback. In fact, yeah. I want to get a Sinker Pro. I want to be yeah. like Seth. Yeah, um, yeah. That's he was a just riding bike. a brand new, brand new one that they sent him down there and was riding in Moab and it was a nice looking bike. It was a little heavy though. Yeah. I was, I was picking it up and I was like, oh man, my bike is nice and lighter than this. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's true. But, you know... I don't know. Well, anyway, I, I don't want to be the dead horse. I think we, we brought yeah. up enough of a conversation yeah. on this one where, um, so as always, well, first of all, uh, right behind our heads right now is a picture uh, from um, Instagram from Navari. I think this is one of his sons, one of his kids. He was riding his bike and he was filming with one hand and riding with the other hand. It was awesome. Um, this is going to be for a future bike chat. I want to talk about when you learn how to ride a bike because I just had a real awesome moment with my daughter. She just learned oh. how to ride her bike. It was cool. So I want to talk about that later on about, you know, anyway. But this like was a perfect timing. So Navari, beautiful pick. It's so nice seeing, you know, people out there with their kids enjoying the sport together. So wonderful pick. Thank you for Navari for posting that. Remember, if you want your pick posted on one of these videos or any of our videos, just simply go and tag RGMTB, Regular Guy Mountain Biking, at Regular Guy Mountain Biking on an Instagram or a Twitter feed on the, on the picture that you like, and we'll try to get it on one of these bike chats. So that would be cool. Um, so thank you, Navari. And follow-up, I always end these with questions, right? You know what they're going to be, folks. Do you still go to a bike shop? Do you think that Brian and I are just assholes because we said that we should, you know, what do you guys think, gals think, um, you got to have an opinion on this. Where do you shop? Uh, if you own a bike shop, what are your thoughts on what I said about the evolution of a bike shop? Am I just like, Gene, nice idea, but I'm never going to pay the mortgage that way. Maybe I, I don't own one. All right, here I, I'm, I'm actually at a Salesforce conference right now recording this because I'm a computer nerd. <laughs> what do you think, Brian? Right? I mean, that, that's a good question. Those are good questions. I really want to hear what you guys think. Yeah. So let's, let's get your opinions on this. Um, I'm sure we're going to get some hits with the topic anyway. And uh, we'll take it from there. This was Gene and Brian. Uh, thanks for joining today on Bike Shot. And um, look, we'll talk to you folks later on. Thanks for tuning in.